Hello and welcome back to Picks and Portraits. Today, I'd like to continue our history of the future by revisiting something that we've looked at before, retrofuturism in marketing, how the future has been used to sell us products or ideas. We will be talking about how and why brands or corporations have associated themselves with the future, as well as some examples, different campaigns with a focus on print ads, a bunch of stuff that we haven't looked at yet. Before we get into that though, this and every video on this channel was made possible by our patrons over at patreon.com slash portraits. This channel is not monetized, we are 100% viewer supported, and in exchange offer a ton of exclusive videos and series. So, if you like what we do and want to help make it happen, please consider supporting us, patreon.com slash portraits. With that plug out of the way, let's head back to the future. So much of the richer futurism that we have featured on this channel is advertising. Uh, there are a few reasons why a company may choose to do this. The first is staying power. This company or product is so strong, so well made or iconic that it will still exist far into the future. This plays into the optimism we see, uh, or used to see, when looking towards tomorrow. Another is state of the art. What is being offered is light years ahead of everything else on the market. Its design or features are cutting edge, it's breaking new ground, better, faster, stronger. We see this a lot with technology. Richer Futurism, obviously, is more about the past than the future. I say that time and time again, and aesthetically, these features are in line with the periods when they were imagined. These features are rooted in the culture of those times as well. Uh, these ads were designed not to predict what was to come, but to sell your product, brand, or service being offered back then. So yeah, that's why the future is such a valuable marketing tool. It taps into our want for permanence or our desire for progress. Now I have tracked down four different campaigns from the mid 20th century, which I know is a lot of viewers favorite future. Uh, we are going to be starting all the way back in the 1940s with the Bonn Aluminum and Brass Corporation. Bonn were known for their futuristic sleek streamlined designs seen in this series of print ads. If this style looks familiar, it's because these illustrations were created by Arthur Raidbow, who was also responsible for the fantastic Closer Than We Think comics, uh, which we looked at a few years ago. The product here was the aluminum or materials that would be used to create these fantastic machines of the near future. All of them promise lighter, stronger materials that will get you where you want to go safer and more economically. Many are vehicles, but there are some appliances. I really love The Fridge of the Future, 1940 question mark. Uh, the whole series is a fascinating look into wartime futurism. You've been seeing calls to buy war bonds in some of these. This is pretty special because there is not a whole lot of futurism from this time, especially based in civilian life. The tone of the ad is very reassuring. When peace is established, when victory comes, the future is transparent. You'll be able to see into your fridge and its shelf would revolve with the push of a button. Push button futurism, classic, very interesting stuff. Into the 1950s, we have New Departures of Tomorrow from New Departure Ball Bearings. This campaign appeared in Scientific American from 1955 through 56 and offered an amazing look into the near future. What's unique about these is that they put a date on many of these ads, some as far ahead as the distant 1973. Most of these ads focus on convenience around the home, laundry can be done at home, wash, dry and fold, even press with the valet mat. In the kitchen, the super chef would magically prepare a meal from fridge to plate with a turn of a knob. Outside of the home, we have the bake mat this bakery mobile on wheels, which promises to process, bake and bag your bread while you watch. My favorite is the drive-in markets, which became a reality. People could select what items they wanted from a screen, and their order would be assembled and delivered via conveyor belt. This sort of service exploded in popularity during the pandemic. Fred McNabb was the artist behind these. Great mid-century stuff here. This was the Space Age, the Atomic Age, the Electric Age. 
It is easy to forget how recently, to the 1950s, electricity was harnessed as a way of powering our lives, and the possibilities it could allow were indulged in a series of ads that ran from 1956 to 1960. These were produced by a lobbying group, America's Independent Electric Light and Power Companies, or AIELPC. This was a collective of privately owned energy providers. Outside of their futurism, they had some pretty wild ads opposing government-ran energy programs and celebrating the promise of atomic energy. In 1956, they began running these ads, boasting power companies build for your new electric living. AIELPC were selling electricity, light, power, so it's no surprise they showcase some of the amazing things that one day might be possible, thanks to energy. Self-driving electric cars, this is a pretty iconic image of a family out for a drive. A version of it was included in this ad, alongside some other accurate predictions, moving walkways, TV screens hanging on walls. Uh, this one here is very similar to what we saw last time, with a heat dome uh, that would allow people to control nature, a swimming scene in the middle of winter. Convenience is a staple of futurism, especially from this time, and this ad here shows father instructing a robot to do yard work via voice command. Uh, this next one brands a sort of UFO-shaped flying vehicle as a personal flying carpet. Uh, there is another in the driveway, though the house seems to have a garage built still for a car. Uh, home shopping is on display here, customers being able to use their TV to preview and order products using a microphone. I don't need to tell you how accurate this is. From the home shopping network to Amazon, you can now order anything from the comfort of your home. Speaking of home, we have seen a bunch of Homes of the Future. Monsanto sponsored one at Disneyland, the Monsanto House of the Future. There was also Westinghouse's All Electric House. In 1961, artist Charles Schreid was hired by Motorola to create a series of illustrations showing their electronics in the homes of tomorrow. He produced these gorgeous, lush, uh, romantic scenes of lovers dancing around the stereo console or watching television. Very similar vibes to GM's Design for Dreaming. Absolutely beautiful work here. Uh, it's interesting how grounded not only they are in reality, but also how much they incorporated nature into the designs. Everyone is set on the backdrop of some kind of natural wonder. Stunning, beautiful, extravagant. It's easy to get lost in these fantastic ideas, seeing so much promise and excitement, and completely forget that these companies weren't offering you the future, nor trying to predict it. Really, they just wanted your money. Now this video was not meant to be exhaustive, there are so many different examples from different eras or futures that we did not feature. We have a whole video on how the Jetsons have been used to sell the future, so check that out if you haven't. We've also looked at brilliance in detail in our history of CGI. I'd love to revisit this topic sometime in our future, <laughs> look at the automotive industry or the schmaltzy AT&T will ads from the early 90s, the future of my childhood. Sid Mead certainly deserves his own video, but that is going to just about do it for today. I will post links in the description if you want to check some of this stuff out more. Like I said, there are tons that I missed, so let me know some futuristic ads you remember. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, if you're new here. Uh, we have a whole series looking at advertising and the future in video games, check that out. We have a lot of great stuff coming up on the channel this month, and patrons are helping make it happen. So, if you like what we do and have the means, please consider joining them. Once again, patreon.com slash portraits. As always, thank you so much for interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. See you in the future.